evening everyone so we welcome you all to our team global my name is parthi chawla and i work as volunteer at edor firstly i would like to brief introduce our organization edor edor is a global volunteer network of students and professionals motivating youth towards positive action This webinar is just an example of the work that this organization does. So we have Miss Marua Bozakri. She is a customer service representative. Uh, so on behalf of Adar, I welcome you all to the Synergy webinar. We have Pradipta sir. He is one of our admin members. and operational in charge of it all before we start i request everyone to turn on their cameras and make this session more interactive those who didn't register can register themselves using the link given in the chat box now without further ado let's kick start kick start this enlightening session Share it like this. It's taken time, but it's great. Now it's uh, more clear. Okay, so thank you for waiting. Here we will start our uh, topic for civic engagement. First, we have index. Uh, we have uh, introduction, definition, history, the four constructs of civic engagement, forms of civic engagement, benefits, challenges, and at the end we have the conclusion. the introduction a 
Civic engagement has gained prominence over the past two decades, and at the present time, it is considered as the cornerstone of democracy. And of course, as we know, all the democratic societies, they are now focusing on engaging young generation on civic mm -hmm. engagement. So participating in civic life restores the people's ability to influence their surroundings. Mm -hmm. There are numerous reasons why this type of participation is crucial. Ranging from being an informed and engaged citizen inside of your country to choosing politicians who will shape the politics that affect the whole countries that we live in. So you can see how civic engagement is very important. And using this privilege to better the lives of other people around us and having an impact on our community can be achieved through civic participation. People just need to find the cause they are passionate about and get involved in the community, starting from education, animal rights, to social justice and housing equity. Every individual can choose, you know, the, the topic they have passion in and participate civically in that. And in this presentation, we will discuss this topic in more details and give simple and clear definition for the concept of civic engagement, its constructs, forms, the benefits, and also the challenges. So first, we have definition of civic engagement. Every activity in which citizens participate in directly or indirectly contributes to improve the quality of life in one's community is considered as civic engagement. And these activities can be in favor of improving one's community by developing the combination of knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to make that difference special for young generation. It's a pathway for promoting the quality of life in a society through a wide range of political and non-political acts, including voting, volunteering, and participating in group activities like community gardens and food banks. Like you can see here in the picture, we have here food banks, people from the neighborhoods that are participating in distributing free meals, uh, especially for people who are in need of food. So this is another this is a good example for this picture for food banks mm -hmm. and the same for uh, community gardens people they gather together you know to take care of the gardens inside of the neighborhood inside of the community and if everyone needs a help in his garden people from the outside they just can come and they help and that is considered as a civic engagement so it can be described as the involvement of every individual in their community to achieve a positive difference in the life of all citizenships. The root of this term is extended from the concept of communitarianism. It's a philosophy based on belief that the community of people has a great influence over their social identities and personalities. And through the active engagement of the people, they can achieve the common good. So the more the individual sense of belonging to this community increases and he adopts its problems as they were part of his own problem, the higher success rate of these activities can be achieved. So just for a little explanation, whenever we find ourselves that, you know, how much we find ourselves belonging to our society, we adopt the problem that the society will live in as ours. And as much as we adopt those problems, we are we become successful in achieving the civic engagement. So individuals with that sense of belonging, they recognize the civic engagement and moral impacts of their community's problems, and with the great willingness, they work together to correct them. They seek engagement in several activities to address issues in different major aspects of society like family life, education, health, economy, environment, and also politics. They act through many forms of participation, including individual volunteerism, voting, engaging in community-wide projects, activism, and advocacy. All of those types of uh, civic engagement, we are going to see them in details in the forms of civic engagement. So here we have history. 
So civic engagement is a concept as old as human civilization. First, we will start with India. We can see here people, they are uh, with each other, inviting for a free distribu distribution of meals. Mm -hmm. So the civic engagement in India is related to the Hindu religion, which is difficult to date. So um, if you want to date volunteering uh, activities in India, it will be very difficult because uh, it's always what sticks to the religious concepts. Yeah. And, uh, and it has, and with the long tradition of voluntary service rooted in the religious concepts of dharma, duty, and dana giving, and they believe in the concept of karma doing good in the present life, will carry forward into the next life, it makes the society not devoid of voluntary contributions, whether individual or collective through religious and social associations. We have here ancient Athens, and the concept there, it's, it dates back to 2,500 years ago, where economic and political prosperity reaches its peak by giving its citizens a direct voice and an active role in civic governance. Following the methodology of allowing citizens to participate individually and directly in making decisions and to give pulse for change. Help but increase sense of belonging to the big community of the Athenian people and channel it in ways that produce the greatest good for the whole society. So uh, we have here a little picture. It's people from all different status of the society. They are getting together inside of the hall, participating in political, non-political discussion, and also in making decisions. Civic engagement traced in Magna Carta. So the Magna Carta is the first document ever issued with the principle that the king in his government was not above the law and it was agreed by the King John of England on 15 June 1250. Till now it is seen as one of the most influential legal documents in British history and in the history of democracy. The Magna Carta gives the right to the citizens to voice up against taxation not approved by parliaments without fearing risk of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. And the clauses of 39 and 40 declares, we will have here a glance of clause 39. It says, no free man shall be seized or imprisoned or stripped of his rights or possessions or outlawed or exiled or deprived of his standing in any way, nor will we proceed with force against him or send others to do so, except by the law of judgment and his equals or by the law of land. We have here clause 40, and it says to no one we will sell, to no one we will refuse or delay right or justice. So the picture here, it's, uh, it appears this is uh, the King John, appearing to sign the Magna Carta forcefully. And the parents here, they, we have here around him the parents and all of uh, the government heads surrounding him to oblige him to force it and to give the citizens all the right of uh, speech and uh, go against uh, what they don't find, uh, find it good in their uh, communities. Also in the Napoleonic, La, uh, Napoleonic Code, yes, in 1804, and uh, the, civic, the Civil Code eliminated feudal and royal privileges in favor of all citizens' equality before the law. It included some rights such as freedom of speech and to give opinion about the issues of citizens' communities, and freedom of worship along with the public trial or by jury. In America, civic engagement appeared in 1830 through civic education when Horace Mann, an American educator, led the common school movements to advocate of the education of all the students in common, regardless of traits, mm -hmm. that would have otherwise excluded them from receiving an education, such as social status, genders, or religion. It was a way to inspire students to develop a passion for learning and in the end, share in the interests of others in order to wear down a transcend racial, class, and ethic and ethnic divisions. 
So this time in America, it was a time where uh, American society was fighting against uh, um, uh, racial divisions. And they were encouraging the students uh, to teach everything that they get inside of the schools to share the, those, this uh, knowledge with the, with the communities, with the people to live in, so that everyone uh, adopts the new models of uh, equality and uh, getting rid of social division. In Europe, firstly in France, after the suspicion of military service in 1976, voluntary service was announced by the president of the French Republic, Jacques Chirac, and introduced officially by the parliament in March 2010 aiming to strengthen national caution and promote social diversity and offers young people aged from 16 to 25 the opportunity to commit for a period of 6 to 12 months to a mission of general interest. So here we can see that France, starting from 2010, uh, allowed civic engagement, especially for young people from 16 to 25 years old, to encourage them uh, to participate in civic activities. In Germany, there were also uh, the suspension of military service, but the civil service was also suspended on July 1, 2011. But again, it appeared again under a different name of federal volunteer service with the direct funding from the state for up to 35,000 volunteers per year. So we can see here that um, the government in uh, Germany, um, they did a funding. They started to fund 30, up to 35 volunteer, volunteers per year. And those volunteers, they used to not take a salary, but at least an, a little allowance. And this allowance was about, it was between uh, 40, 50, uh, for, uh, 450 euro to 700. It was just a little uh, help for the students and encourage the young to participate in civil activities. Well, in Switzerland, civil service was officially introduced in 1992 and came into effect in 1996. It's defined as a service of public interest. And it's considered as an alternative for military service for people who declare themselves to be in conflict of conscience. So those kind of people in, in uh, Switzerland, uh, starting from 1992, there were many people who refused to do military service. So those kind of people, they were offered the chance to do uh, civil service in place of the military one. So in Italy also, there was the suspicion of military service that took place officially in March 2001. And after five years, the Italian government introduced the civic engagement for the citizens in 2006, encouraging young people aging from 18 to 28 or years old to volunteer for at least one year, either in Italy and outside of the country. So we can see here Italy, they are uh, making it uh, from uh, 18 years old to 28 to volunteer either inside or travel outside to another country. Even when people, they travel outside to do the service, it is considered as a civil country for Italy. And in general, we can see here that Europe started uh, introducing civil service or civic engagements officially after the suspension of obligatory of the military service. In Asia, China, Although it is considered as an important element of achieving a developing democracy in society, civic engagement appeared in China during a very difficult period. From 1965 to 1976, the Great Proletariat Revolutions Program, which appeared in that time, aimed to teach young generation to sacrifice their personal choice and force them to work for the common good. And the most pertinent example was set by the foot soldiers of Red Army of Mao Zedong. And despite the unstable political situation existing at that time, civic engagement continued to develop in the communities till now. So we can see here the China. In China, civic engagement wasn't a choice at all. Actually, it was um, a propaganda from the, the government to teach young people to sacrifice for the country first, and then to think about the personal choices later. Uh, 
Um, so um, here, yes, the four constructs of civic engagements. To work towards improving the civic life of one's community, one must have the combination of knowledge, abilities, values, and drive necessary to achieve that improvement. It means commitment. So young people are so young people's life is enhanced by these activities, which also benefit the community socially. The research literature has identified four interconnected constructs that are essential for civic involvement. Firstly, we have civic action. So civic action can be defined as a form of citizenship activity consisting in mostly collective initiatives aimed at implementing rights, taking care of common goods or empowering citizens. It can be addressed both to governmental or, or private interlocutors as well as to the general public. So civic action can be done or can be organized either by governments or by private organizations or also by you know individuals in certain country gathering together and deciding to volunteer in other place to help other people so also we have here civic action program a civic action program sometimes referred to as a civic action project it's a kind of operation intended to support the community by conducting long-term programs or short-term projects. Using the resources and capabilities of a military force or civilian group. So among the operations of this kind are, we have a dental civic action program, engineering civic action program, medical civic action program, and veterinarian civic action program. So first, we have dental civic action program. Dentists and dental technicians with equipment and supplies set up a temporary field clinic to provide dental treatment to a local population. As here in the picture, we can see here, probably it's a Nazim country, maybe in China or Philippines or Vietnam. Uh, here are people getting free treatments in this uh, temporary clinic field with dentists from all over the world. As we can see here, he is a Chinese, a Chinese person. Here there is an American dentist. Here it looks like African. So people from all around the world, they join this field to give free treatments for the people who are in need of that. Engineering Civic Action Program. Same thing, we have engineers with equipment conduct civil engineering projects to execute any number of infrastructure improvement projects, such as building or improving schools, clinics, roads, or drinking wells. So here in the picture, we have people from the military volunteering and in a certain country, and they're building here, probably there it's a school or a clinic for free for the citizens, for the, uh, the people, the communities, they are in need of that. Same thing for medical civic action program. Medical doctors and specialists with equipment and supplies set up a temporary field clinic to provide limited medical treatment to the local population. And this civic program is generally narrow in scope and usually provide targeted assistance such as inoculations. Same here, there is always military people, they are organizing those kinds of activities. And also there is there are doctors, there is here distribution of uh, a lot of uh, medic uh, medicines. Also they give uh, treatments for free, but treatments of short uh, period, not treatments of long time, because the clinic uh, usually it doesn't uh, stay in the country for a long time. And also for vaccines, uh, some uh, countries and areas when they get a problem, um, a certain uh, health issue or a certain virus uh, uh, starts spreading, uh, spreading on them, uh, those uh, civic activity action program, uh, through this program, they keep giving vaccines through the, the, the doctors that they are volunteering in it. 
same for a veterinarian civic action program. It's a veterinarians with equipped and supplies provide limited veterinarian services for the local population. It's generally narrow in scope and usually provide targeted assistance such as inoculations. So we see here, it's an American uh, military doctor and she is trying, she's uh, uh, treating animals. I think it's uh, probably in African country. Second, we have civic skills. So first we saw civic actions. And second, we have civic skills. Civic skills are the basic abilities which are required to be participating citizen of a country and include interpersonal communication skills, knowledge of political systems, and the ability to critically think about civic and social or political life, sorry. So those skills enable people to gain greater global and cultural awareness of the society around them. We have first knowledge of political systems. There are the steps towards it is to understand and having a say in what your rights and responsibilities as a citizen are and should be. This is the first thing to start with. So uh, to start your uh, civic engagement, first you have at least know what are your rights and what are your responsibilities in your country. And furthermore, also better understanding the international politics and law in general, if it's possible, of course. So critical thinking also is the ability to analyze facts, create and organize ideas, draw conclusions, define opinions, make comparisons and evaluate arguments and finally solve problems. We have the interpersonal communication skill is exchanging information meaning, feeling and opinions between two or more people via verbal and nonverbal means. Skills for good interpersonal communication are motivation first, is the eternal state that pro propels individuals to engage in goal-directed behavior. We have also active listening, is the process of getting ready to listen, paying attention to the verbal and nonverbal cues being given, and then responding appropriately to demonstrate that you are paying attention to what is being said. Empathy involves understanding, considering the other person's perspective, emotions, and circumstances. Leadership also is the ability of an individual group or organization lead, influence, or guide the other individuals, teams, or entire organizations. Feedback is the opinion that you give or receive regarding the impact, efficacy, or quality of your communication. Providing and accepting feedback is a skill that goes hand in hand with good communication and active listening. So generally those skills, they fit people in general. Either you are just a normal individual participating in normal projects in your community, or if you are a head of a charity organization, you have to develop those skills so that you can achieve a good results in your civic engagement. Three, we have here social cohesion. A society's level of solidarity and closeness amongst its groupings is referred to as its social cohesiveness. It pinpoints two primary dimensions, a community sense of belonging, and we saw that in, uh, in the first definition of, uh, in the definition of uh, civic engagement in general, and in the interpersonal connections among its constituents. It is the result of a democratic endeavor to forge national identity, economic dynamism, social balance, in order to prevent social disintegration, maintaining the impulses of unchecked economic expansion and construct an equitable system. A social process known as a social cohesion tries to strengthen the plurality of citizenship by licensing social division inequality and socioeconomic gaps. It connects individual freedom with social justice, economic efficiency, and equitable resource sharing. And it represents people needs for both personal growth and a sense of belonging. So of course, if someone is living in a, a equitable society, of course they will go into be a sense of belonging and the opposite. Four and the last construct 